Spirit tell you here from? Your past is a gift. Okay, so in this video, as promised, I was I wanted to talk about how we can be our harshest critics, okay? And this also comes from when we were quite young and you've got these adults constantly telling you, you know, that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, that you're this, you're that, you're the other, and they're constantly telling you this. Or they're constantly saying it about themselves. And you're watching this day after day, year after year, you know? Um, in my case, it was my mum was quite obese. She had a problem with obesity. Not overweight, but obesity, right? Being very, very big for her size, you know, for her height and for what she should have, she needed to be, to be healthy, right? It's not a, how it looks, it's about being healthy, you know, because eventually it caught up with her and she started having heart problems and she had to lose the weight, you know, or she wasn't going to live much longer. The body just couldn't take any more. But anyway, the funny thing was I grew up watching my mum being overweight, you know, and watching her feel ashamed whenever she tried clothes on or anything that she'd feel ashamed of how she looked, of who she was, you know? And I have never been, I've been a little bit overweight. I've never been more than 10 kilos over what my ideal weight should be or, you know, but there's not one day in my life. I look back on some photos and I think, oh my God. And I thought I was big. You know what I mean? That I was fat was the word that kept popping up in my head. You know, oh God, I look fat in that photo. You know, I look back on it now and I think, what was I thinking? I was so thin, you know, like, <laughs> but even to this day, I look at my body and I keep your know, tiniest little bulge and, oh my God, I'm so fat. You know, I feel huge. I feel bloated. I feel, and it all comes down to that pattern of watching this other person struggle with whatever they've taken on in their life, you know, and you're watching them over and over. And it doesn't matter how thin I am. I've taken that on, you know, that, oh my God, I look so fat and it's, I look at my photos and I think, why do I keep thinking that? It doesn't apply to me. It's not mine, you know? But sometimes you'll have an adult that feels a certain way and they do put it on you. You know, they do put it on you that, you know, if they they feel that they're lazy, that they could be doing more or whatever, and they tell you that you're lazy and they're constantly telling you how lazy you are and you're lazy and you're lazy. And you take that on into your adult life. And so... This video is about you starting to listen to the conversations that are going on upstairs. What are you saying to yourself? You know, don't worry about what you're saying to, you know, thinking about everyone else, because if you're judging yourself, obviously you're going to be judging everything outside of you. You know, because you've already got those thoughts going of having to put a label on everything, on having to judge everything. You know, this has to be in this box of it's good, this one is bad, this one is right, this one is wrong all these little boxes with all these little labels and everything has to be categorized but until you can break free from all that from having to have all these little boxes and all these little categories you know all these little folders and everything goes into its neat little folder all gets filed away at the end of the day up here and everything's in its place until you can let go of that you can't be free you can't be happy because you, you're chained to that you're imprisoned by that way of thinking and the most important the most important step is to start listening to how you're talking to yourself you know because so many of us spend so much of our lives and we talk to ourselves in a way that we wouldn't talk to anybody else you know we put ourselves down we berate ourselves we criticize ourselves constantly we're never good enough and it's time to start looking at yourself for who you really are, you know, and realize that none of that matters. You know, you didn't get all that housework done today. It'll be there tomorrow. It's not the end of the world. You know, that's what I keep saying to my six year old. Why do you keep saying that? It's not the end of the world. The world is not going to end because you didn't get all the housework done. <laughs> you know, the world is not going to end because you're not perfect. You're not supposed to be. You're not supposed to be until you can let go of that image that you have to be perfect and you can be fine just as you are and accept that this is who you are. If you can't accept you, if you can't start talking to yourself in a kind way with loving words, how can you have 
a beautiful relationship with others around you. How is that even possible? When you can't love you, how can anybody else love you? You're not going to let anyone in. So you need to start looking at what, you know, who you are. What's special about you? Because each one of us has a gift to give to others. And it's not a material thing. It's not a, I'm not talking about what you can buy with money. I'm talking about the things inside of you, the real things. You know, today I was reading an article in the North Shore Times. I was at a house helping an elderly lady and she was showing me this article and I thought, oh my God, I have to put this in, right? Because it's for a reason, it's been shown to me. And I was talking about the teenagers on the North Shore that belong to all these wealthy families and the pressure that they're under to do really well in their HSC and their year 12 exams by their parents because their parents think that because they're throwing all this money at them and that they have all this stuff, that they have to perform. You know, they have to achieve, they have to do well. So they've got all that added pressure. And some of them were saying they don't see their parents for two or three days at a time. They live in these huge houses with everything they could possibly want, material-wise, material things, but they don't see their parents for two or three days. So, you know, I'm starting to think that <laughs> Money is kind of, it kind of can be the root of all evil because we get so obsessed with getting more and more and more and more and more that we lose sight of why it was important in the first place. What all this money was for originally. You know, to have a better life, better quality. But you never see each other. You don't talk to each other. You don't have time to be with each other. So these teenagers are growing up lonely and alone and disconnected from the people that brought them into the world. All right, my darlings, I want you to think about that. When you think that money is the answer, think. That's what we're sold through movies and through the media, you know, that you need to have all this money, you need to have all these things to be happy, because that's the goal at the end of it all. You need these things to be happy, to feel satisfied and fulfilled inside. But that doesn't come from out there, from those things. All right, my darling, we'll talk more in the next video. Love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.